I'm Joni. And I'm Kit. We're the co-founders of Practically Perfect. And today we're going to talk to you about how to store puzzles in a practically perfect way. Puzzles are something that can be really challenging to maintain an organizing solution for. And we'll tell you all the reasons why. Well, I think we're going to talk about several kinds of puzzles. There's the, oh, oh there's your fun little schmoofy over there. So there's kids puzzles. What do you call these puzzles? Wooden puzzles, Kit. Oh, mm -hmm. wooden puzzles. These are wooden puzzles. And then mm -hmm. there's more grown up version. 500, 200, 1,000 piece puzzles. And this little chip works for both types of puzzles. Can I just have a sad mommy moment? You don't have these puzzles in your house I anymore. had to borrow this from my mom because we no longer have wooden puzzles. It felt like a milestone I didn't know existed until I realized I didn't have one. Oh, you're crying. <laughs> nope. It's just I have a little mascara. <laughs> It's fine. I'm not crying. You are I crying. I do have mascara you in my eyes. Crying. So when we did have these puzzles in my house, we would sort of put all the puzzles away. And then one of my adorable kiddos would come over and decide to play with puzzles. And the pieces would get all all over the floor and mixed up. And then they would lose interest in the puzzles. And so the cool thing about a puzzle is cleaning it up essentially is like, doing it, right? Like this puzzle is cleaned up when the pieces are all placed, but when you're not in the mood to do 10 puzzles and the pieces are everywhere, that can be a real bummer. Well, I will also add, it's hard to store it too, right? Because unless you're storing it just so, those pieces fall out all over the place. That's right. You can't store it vertically. You certainly can't travel with it. No. Nope. You're not taking it to grandma's or on the airplane. <laughs> No. So here's a faster way. I mean, let's just. Oh my! Just, that must have been really loud. Oh my over goodness! There. Okay, wow. so it's cleanup time. This little tip is. Mm -hmm. We have a zippered pouch. I think this is the largest size. We'll have a link below. Yes, if this you're is interested. the extra large, okay, and extra they come large. in a variety of sizes. Yes, and what's great about this is you just open it up. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to put the pieces back together the right way. No. May I? Oh please! And then you zip it up. And you can either lay them flat, you can store them upright. We like to put them into a basket. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we add a little bit of label tape to label each puzzle. Yeah, and or with a see-through bag, true. you do or don't have to. True. If you're a labeling enthusiast, we'll never tell you not to label something. <laughs> But this is a great way to store them upright. It's a little bit easier to flip through and look for the one that you want. Yeah. Or for your kids to do that. And so this is something that we did when our kids were younger. And I think as they've gotten older, and I won't cry, but they are doing now these 200, 500, and with our help, 1,000-piece puzzles. They present their own challenges, these puzzles that come in cardboard boxes. Yes, often the boxes come apart and pieces fall out and get lost, or the boxes just collapse. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Kit, let's not dump this one out on camera. Please don't. To example it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same method. Yes. You just take all the pieces and dump it inside. Mm -hmm. And you say, but hold on a second. Wait, I have to know what it looks like to put it together. We're going to cut out the image from the box mm -hmm. and you'll place it in the bag so you'll have it all together. I love that idea. Can I cut it? Please go for it. It gives me a lot of pleasure. <laughs> Get your aggression out on that. I will. Cardboard. These are my really sharp scissors that I don't usually let my um, kiddos use. Voila. <laughs> okay, but so as a avid puzzler myself, I do like to stand it up like this. As a fellow avid puzzler, I was <laughs> concerned about the same. Okay, and so what's the solution? Well, I think there are many solutions. I think that you could prop this up using anything, right? Yeah. A jar, a vase, whatever happens to be handy. A can of LaCroix, if yes. you puzzle with LaCroix. If you puzzle with wine. I think a bottle of wine like might be the style. perfect prop mm -hmm. for this. But I have to be honest, by the time my puzzles are worn and torn, we've probably done them. And I'll just say too, don't feel the need to hold on to puzzles that you've done and don't plan to do again. We trade puzzles. We do. It's pretty fun. Yeah. All right. So we'll just put this little puppy right here. Mm -hmm. Seal it up. Ooh, girl, shall we store it with our other puzzle? I think so. For a household that doesn't have a tremendous amount of puzzles, the whole bin could just be puzzles that doesn't have a lot of what? Well, you know, if you had a lot of puzzles, I might do a basket of wooden puzzles. I might do a basket of jigsaw puzzles. Oh, I see. But this pretend house I see. doesn't have In a lot of puzzles. In our imaginary world, this is just a house with only two puzzles. And That's so right. both puzzles go into both. the puzzle basket. And then, you know, room for growth, should you procure a third puzzle in your life. Well, 
We hope you've learned a little something. And if you like what you learned today, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you could also follow us on Instagram at Practically Perfect LA. Lots of fun content over there too. And remember, if it's practical for you, it's perfect for you. Thanks for joining. You're crying, you're crying.